This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the CEO of Hannon Metals, Mr. Michael Hudson. Mike, how are you today, senor? <laughs> Muy bien. From down under, Gerardo. Very well, thank you. Well, listen, it's exciting times, right? Hannon just commenced a 79-kilometer geophysical survey on five porphyry what you describe as porphyry epithermal targets at the 100% owned Valiente Peru project. I'll add my own spin, and this is just my take. Because of the size of these targets and these systems, at least at this early stage, I'm calling it each one of the targets a project, right? You talk about having, um, you know, eight that you've, you've done some work on, and obviously now you're advancing a certain amount of them, but there's also 10 earlier stage ones. And I, I, I got to emphasize to everyone out there, to me, Hannon Metals has managed to put together, at the very least, 18 very potentially prospective projects within this brand new undiscovered belt that we're finally starting to get more of a peek at. So I wanted to have you on to talk about the five porphyry epithermal targets that you're working on at Valiente. And then I obviously want to set the table for the rest of the year because I couldn't be more excited. Thanks, Gerardo. Yeah, it's it's interesting to hear your take there because it, it simply is that. I mean, we've got a, a new Miocene, so that's the age on Earth that uh, was very fertile in the Andes. Uh, so it's a geological age Miocene porphyry belt over something like 150 kilometers. These are all new discoveries uh, we're essentially unknown uh, from only a couple of years ago, and and we've done a hell of a lot of work advancing them and 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 bringing them all up to basically drill stage, and and this is just a, a, another step. Uh, we've mobilised a, a geophysical contractor for for the next few months to to go out there and do the the hard work and look at these things in the third dimension, um, and for most of them, it's the first time you know, we've found lots of copper and lots of gold at surface over kilometers in each one of these targets but this is the first time uh, for for all of them bar one that we're looking into that third dimension and just seeing the scale of the system and and if it continues at depth and and if so where and how and how big is it developing what are you hoping to accomplish with the survey on the five porphyry epithermal targets how much information will you be able to derive and in and, and, and process and, and how is that going to aid you know the permitting process on the projects where that process hasn't yet been initiated because you're de-risking those projects right yeah so so we talked about 18 porphyries uh, eight which we've done uh, uh, a, a significant amount of work on its surface and and now five of those we're we're taking into that third dimension, if you like. And, and to answer each one of your questions there, I, I think maybe we should just quickly go through the targets without uh, getting too much into the weeds. But basically, it's to, to demonstrate the scale of a system and where it is and or refine drill targets. That's simply put. But, uh, you know, if, if we looked at the press release, Previsto Central, that's what we call the monster. It's a it's a huge five by three kilometer footprint, which is, you know, up there with the biggest porphyry footprints in the world. And this is the first time we're doing it, just a, basically a, a little, two long lines across it just to see the system at depth. So that's a first look-see <laughs> under this monster. Previsto East, which is uh, three kilometers east of Previsto Central, where we've got lots of uh, uh, copper and gold in boulders and soils, you know, sub-economic soils over col uh, kilometres uh, in, in that area, but we've never found an outcrop. And, and is that just sh shedding off the big one from the west or is that <laughs> just locally sourced? And we just want to see what's under the, those, those scree and soils to see if there's a, a primary source there. And then, uh, then we move into the more advanced ones where we're actually got final permitting to drilling upcoming and and we hope that will come in q4 the permitting for drilling so we're doing much more detailed work we're doing 3d uh, offset array ip survey so we can actually model the 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 mineralization at depth in much more detail so that's for ricardo herrera a porphyry sortilecchio another porphyry target 
uh, about eight kilometres to the north, and it's uh, in the middle is a, is a project called Vista Alegre, which is much more gold-rich and looks like it's a, a mix between an epithermal gold system and a copper system. I tell you what's interesting to me, Mike, and I've said it before and I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. It's it's going to be fun once and if, but I believe, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of when, not a matter of if. Um, once these discoveries start being made, it's going to be interesting to me to look back in a few years and, and, and sort out whether there's more copper or more gold in these systems as a whole, right? And, I, and I'm talking about the belt now because there's some obviously lots of porphyry targets that are you know copper gold but there's some also primarily gold copper systems is that accurate yeah and 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 it's an evolution of these systems so it's it's how it's where we are in the system um number one so uh, at, at the top levels of of these magmatic systems you get the epithermal gold parts of the systems as you get deeper into the porphyry you go into a more copper or copper gold porphyry, depending on the, the chemistry of that porphyry. And, and we've got a, a, a couple of different porphyry chemistries or signatures. We've got the, the alkaline uh, porphyries, which are typically much more gold rich than the calc alkaline. So there's a bit too much geological terminology, but, but we do have these gold rich systems into the porphyries and then naturally going up into the the epithermals. Previsto, Previsto Central uh, at the top parts is a, a mountain at 700 metres and we see very little copper there but there's lots of gold and then when you come down to the lower levels um, we, we're into the porphyry proper. So we see that transition in, in individual projects and then across the projects. Interesting. Now uh, before I let you go I have to go one at a time with the three projects as I'm calling them. Um, where we're anticipating permits, hopefully, in the next several months, right? And, and, and obviously with the goal to drill immediately thereafter, but that would be Ricardo Herrera, Vista Alegre, and Sortilegio. What are you expecting or hoping from the Ricardo Herrera porphyry copper target? Well, we did some 2D uh, surveys there, um, broad space lines, just to see how it worked a, a, a year, a bit, a year and a bit ago, and so we know that system continues to depth, and you know we saw it to 500 meters, and we saw it dip south uh, below the the surface work and all the geology and geochemistry that we've got at surface. So now we wanted to see much more detail in this much more densely uh, uh, um, a planned survey, so we can put drill holes exactly into the best parts and. And we'll have to make some assumptions there from what we see on surface and where the, the copper rich areas are and, and, and not because there's different ages of poor um, magmatic rocks that intrusive rocks that have come into the, the area. So we've got fertile rocks and we'd love to see high charge abilities or, or resistivity resistivities associated with those so we can target the best parts of them basically so you, you want to get it's uh, your best holes in as early as possible so that's a, that's the simple methodology there excellent and again that's ricardo herrera vista alegre it's an epithermal gold and porphyry copper target or project what are you hoping there well we see much less there just by the nature that it's uh, this uh, Ricardo is a, uh, a hill Vista Alegre is is more so in in lower areas so a lot more soil cover um, we do have outcrops with you know running grams of gold and it's over kilometers and we've done again we I think we did one or two lines there that showed some extremely uh, anomalous um, IP response, so a lot of sulfide in the ground, and we really want to map that out. So we just got a little look into that system uh, at the early stages, and and again, we're doing the detailed survey because we know there's a lot of fertility in that system, and just where the best parts of it. We really co couldn't tell you today where the best parts to put a drill hole in, but uh, this IP will will help nail that down. Last but not least, Sorti Legio. You've uh, found some boulders that assayed up to 16% copper and 4.39 grams per ton gold. What are you hoping um, to see and find at Sorti Legio? Yeah, so this is uh, one that we've done no geophysics on before. It's about eight kilometers north of Ricardo Herrera. It's, it's one of these alkalic 
system, so a lot more gold in it, a lot more gold than we see at Ricardo. Uh, so it's it, it's got the, it's got uh, that aspect to it, and and it's very large. It's uh, you know it's 1.8 by 1 kilometres, and and uh, we're really looking at that for the first time. But we know with all that metal coming. Uh, literally dripping off that target over that area that uh, there's a system there waiting to be pulled apart and understood and 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 that's what we're doing for the first time there so a little less advanced but uh, we hope this 3d offset array ip survey will will uh, push uh, uh, sortilegio uh, in understanding up to the level where we've got uh, ricardo and and we've basically got 13 or 14 drill platforms on all those three, a total of 40 drill platforms being permitted as we speak. When do you anticipate we will start seeing some of the results from these surveys? Well, we started the survey at Previsto Central and we've got one of the lines just uh, just finishing. So I, I'd expect news in the coming weeks, uh, all, all being... All being uh, well planned with there's a lot of people out there, 40 people in the survey equipment keeping running, etc. But we're not not too far off. Well, I don't think it's a coincidence that you started with the monster. I am absolutely uh, thrilled um, that we're at the stage now where we get to start peeling some of the layers back a little bit at a time. And I think it's going to be a, a, a fun several years, Mike. Anything to add to that? No, just seminal exploration surveys in frontier areas defining massive systems and it's a very exciting time and you're still getting good feedback and cooperation with the government right i know when i mention uh the potential for you know this to become uh, a, a multi multi multi-billion dollar company um the one pushback that i've gotten in the past is yes but can they get through the permitting and i absolutely believe that it's going in the right direction, but I'd, I'd rather get it from you being that you're you're on the ground there with the team. Well, you can only work with fact, and uh, the facts are that that it's taken us quite a long time to permit the Jogmec JB, which is uh, nothing to do with this, you know, we, with the San Martin project, that's taken a couple of years to get the drill permitting. Whereas the the Balen area, which is Ricardo Herrera, Vista Alegre and Sotelecchio altogether, uh, is, is essentially 30 to 40, of that time frame where we find ourselves in almost the equivalent position, you know, and so it's uh, the, the timing has increased. There's green shoots, the government's making all the right noise. The Minister of Mines has come to one of our projects twice this year um, in, in the local towns to, to show support for the project and what we're doing. So we're getting, we're getting support at all different levels and remembering the local people here want these projects and that's where it all fundamentally stems from and the vast vast majority of people are, are very supportive and we've got lots and lots of people as many people in the the social licensing team as geologists really are working working hand in hand with all the stakeholders to bring them along as 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 we unravel these discoveries exciting times i want to see all of it before the discoveries start uh rolling out i will be there next week along with mr Nick Hodge, my business partner, colleague, and friend, and along with Mr. Tim Hicks, our audio visual camera wizard. So can't wait to document it. Can't wait to share it with uh, readers and followers. And thank you uh, in advance for being such a gracious host, Mike. Oh, thank you for making the effort. You'll have uh, lots of fun and see some amazing things and, and some very good people down there, Gerardo. Have, Look, uh, have fun. Stay safe. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Hey everybody, Gerardo Del Real here. If you're enjoying the content that you just saw, you can let us know in three simple steps. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and please share across your network and on social media. Take care everybody.